I'm going to share with you some of the tools that I use to create art, uh, primarily abstract art. Um, and so I wanted to share with you the tools that are out there. There are so many that you could choose from. Some of them are primarily made for artists, but there are some that you just you can find on your own in places like dollar stores or hardware stores. Let's start with this one. These are called pellet knives. These are primarily made for the use of artists. Um, this one, you can see they come in different shapes and sizes. This one's kind of on the square side. We have some that are slanted. We have oval shaped. Some more a little bit on the pointier side and smaller. Some more, they look like a spade and very pointy. Um, so you can see that these are made of stainless steel. And uh, what you do is you put the paint on them, um, and you can actually dip it into the paint, or you can put paint directly on it, and you use it, you know, to uh, go in different directions on your, um, some purposeful directions, some of the directions can be random, um, but if, if you ever use it with paint, you, you dip it in the paint and spread it about using in a, uh, a certain way using the edges. Now, not only do they come in stainless steel, but they come in plastic also. These can be found at your everyday art stores or dollar stores. I've actually seen these being sold in stores such as Walmart. Um, so you can find them anywhere. Now, the other one I want to tell you about, and this is a painter's roller. You actually, the painter use it to paint on the walls. You dip it in your paint and you spread it about on your canvas. And I'll demonstrate that a little bit later. I have a straight edge. This is probably used by a handyman found in a hardware store. And you take it, put paint on its edge. You can dip it in it. You can purposely put it on here and spray it across your canvas in whatever way that you would like. Okay. We have the straight edge. Um, this is, it's, this one's plastic, but they come in stainless steel also. Different sizes. Uh, you dip it in the paint on the edge, or you can put the paint on your actual uh, canvas, and you can spread it around. It almost works just like a palette knife. I, you know, the more I think about this, I used to have a metal one like this when I was a teacher, and I would use it to help scrape up gum because it has a very sharp, rigid edge. Um, and then I have this uh, little item called a wedge. It is primarily made for artists. It is, you can see it's bendable, it's plastic-like, um, thick plastic, has serrated edges. You can use this side of the edging or this side of the edging to help create lines on your paper. You can just, you have to, you can get, you can smear, you can make them very sharp lines. The more paint you put on it, the darker it's going to be, the, the lighter the paint. Then, it, again, you may have to find yourself dipping more than once to get that those lines in the way that you want them. I have the everyday sponge. Sponges come in so many different shapes and sizes and textures. As a matter of fact, I have a whole jug here of different sponges I have collected over time. They are not easy to get clean after you use them, especially if you let them sit around like I probably did and didn't put too much paint in and didn't rinse it out right away. Um, but it has, there's so many different textures. I see one down here that I really want to show you. This one has a very, if you look really close, you can see that its texture is very um, different than this particular one I have in my hand. See, this one has more holes in it. This one's more has a more smoother base, but yet it still has holes. This one really is smooth. And in fact, my cat bit <laughs> a hole into one part of it. Uh, but there are so many different sizes, and the sponge can really make nice textures. You would dabble it, or you can press hard on your canvas and smooth it around and create these circular. Uh, swerves. Um, and then the, finally I want to show you what trowels. The trowel is used primarily for um, spreading maybe putty on a wall. 
Um, they come in different sizes. See how big this one is. This one is a um, has lines, circular lines in it, which might help create some different textures on your canvas. But you would dip it in the paint, or you could put paint sporadically around it, and or you could put it on your canvas, the paint already on your canvas, and just have it spread it around. Now, I would only use something this huge with a very large canvas, because um, that's, that's just too big for something this small. And you have the ones, this trowel has a handle on it, it has rubber on the bottom. Uh, you can look at the textures really close and see that it has something else that might bring some more uh, textures to the canvas. You dip it in the paint, or you, again, you can dabble paint on the bottom, uh, or dip it on your, uh, your, palette, your paint palette, and then spread it how you want it. You can do different angles, you can go straight across, up and down. It's totally up to you. Now, again, I found these. These are more trowels. They come in different sizes. It's a stainless steel. They have handles on the back. Different handles on the back. Um, and again, same same concept. Spread the paint and spread it how you want it on your canvas. And lastly, I have ones made of sponge. Same effect. Dip it. You know, spread it about. I wanted to demonstrate real quick how it might come out on the canvas itself. So I want to give you a closer look. So the first thing I did was I put a little bit different color paints on my um, on my my palette. And so I, you can either choose to dip whatever colors. You could just dip the whole thing and just take different colors. You might only want one color. It's totally up to you. But I'm just gonna just randomly dip some colors. And I'm just going to show you some of the effects that it makes. It depends on how hard. Like the first one, I had a lot of paint on it. I pressed very softly and some of the paint came off. But then I started pressing very lightly and I get a different effect. Now if I want the smearing effect, I'm going to set this down for a minute. I'm going to take this sponge, push down, and it can create something totally different. And I'm going to show you that up close. See the different different textures, and it can be darker as and light as you want it. I'm not using a whole lot of paint right now because I'm just trying to quickly demonstrate. Let me just put this back up here. Now I'm going to show you what this wedge does. It's really cool. I'm going to dip it in the dark green and blue so you can see it hopefully better. And I'm going to just take it. And these are my lines that I've created. And then you can play with it, and it might do something else. You know, uh, maybe you want to do some different things like this. You know, it's totally up to you how you do it. Again, I'm going to show you this up close. These are the lines. Okay. One more. I am going to show you. This. We know that how this a painter's brush. I'm just going to take a little bit of it and just maybe go over here. I can go hard or I can do something, you know, something lighter. Um, you know, I can go very softly with it. It's totally up to you. Each and every one of these tools can create different. See this up here. You look at the, I'm sorry, up here, the blotch that I made, this is one of the effects. Um, the colors you choose is going to determine the effect that your actual painting has. The, the bottom line is, if you're going to paint, you've got to be willing to experiment. Sometimes you can plan out what you want. Sometimes you may have to go random. Sometimes random is the best thing. It, it turns out to be things that you didn't expect. Uh, but you got to be willing to experiment and just see what each of these tools uh, can do for you. Um, again, they can create some really wonderful effects. You just got to have fun. Hope you enjoyed this and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye.